Now we're going to do the lover's card. When you look at this card, the color change is pink and red and purple and white and it's very inspiring and it's very uplifting and it's very positive. Um, this card represents Gemini and you will see that symbol down at the bottom. Um, you see two lovers, a dark king and a light queen being in a sacred ceremony like a marriage with a purplish monk back behind sanctifying their union. What this card represents is the coming together of opposites. So in life, whenever you first fall in love, you will have a tendency as a young person to fall in love with someone who is opposite you. So if you're the good Catholic girl, you'll fall in love with the biker boy. Um, and this is because you're learning to find both sides of yourself. You're learning to live and find harmony within your own duality. When you fall in love with someone who is opposite you, you expand your reality and you let go of your judgments and your old perceptions. It gives you an opportunity to expand in the presence of love. Also with this card you will see above the monk, you will see Cupid who is blinded and his arrow is pointing towards the lovers because love is definitely blind. Also at the top you will see the symbols of Adam and Eve which were of course the first great lovers that helped each other expand into the world of knowledge but in doing that they left their perfect world of Eden behind. So when you get this card and you have fallen in love, I call this card the puppy love card or the infatuation card. Most people love to see this card, they get very excited when they see this card, but to me this is the beginning of love and it is the warning that you have fallen in love with your opposite and you are learning to embrace a different part of yourself than you have before. So opposites do attract, that's how this works in life and this is how we grow and expand. Down below the two lovers you will also see a dark little boy and a light little girl. And so he is offering her his wand. Again, remember wands and swords are masculine. And then she is offering him her flowers and her chalice, which is her sacred womb, which represents the cups and the discs. So they're each offering up their gifts to the other in exchange for this love. You will also see a red lion with bat wings, and bats represent transformation of dark energy into light. It's also a test, and bat tests are always about you're going to discover something that's hidden in your darkness. And you've got a white eagle, and that white eagle is saying you will also fly very, very high, and you will learn to have a new type of overview and perspective. Down at the very bottom, you will also see the image of a, the caduceus, and the caduceus is the winged egg. And so that represents this type of royalty and symmetry and balance and power. And right now that power is down below. So the focus is in the first, in first chakra, which is about survival instinct. So it's also important to remember that in the genetics field, oftentimes we are drawn genetically to our opposite because that allows a greater expansion of the gene pool. So there is a reason we are falling in love with our opposite. It is about personal growth and consciousness. It is about expanding the gene pool and making it stronger. And when you get two opposites coming together and they learn to love each other, this is how we learn to not be in war.